it's not that we're exiling women in the name of feminism or whatever. Like, we are literally making the choices to, first of all, not allow ourselves to be drained dry. Because if your friend is getting drained dry by a man and she's coming to you to restore and whatnot, by proxy, you're allowing a man to use you. How is that decentering men? To decenter men properly, you have to decenter male centered women. What you also don't have is extra resources. You know, we're already running on fumes because you know, most women already have, especially in America, already have such limited time. They're working 40 hours a week, they only get two weeks off a year, sick days are hard to come by. So you really already have very limited, you know, time. I'm a a big resource so for me if i'm operating in a woman-centered community the last thing that i want to do is have to give up those resources for something that was a calculated decision on that woman's part i see that this man sucks but i'm just going to continue on my merry way and see what happens okay go watch both those videos i actually this happened to me i want to share my experience with this because i think it's really important um to make points uh through storytelling which is like what i do but please go watch both the videos, they're so good. And I'm actually gonna do a video later on about the actual danger factor, cause that's huge. That is huge when you uh, have, when you're dating somebody who has all these red flags and doesn't treat you very well and like might be a narcissist and maybe do whatever, um, it is dangerous, not just to you, but to everybody who loves you. And that deserves an entire video because I have a lot to say about that. I learned very hard lessons from that and I'm still having to forgive myself for that but I want to talk about the resources part because time and energy and love those are all uh limited and like she was saying especially in the U.S. where you know like for instance here in France they have five paid weeks of vacation I don't <laughs> because I uh freelance and rely on these dumb apps to get paid but most people who have a normal job most any job even in McDonald's even like jobs that don't like pay very well, they get, they are guaranteed five weeks of paid vacation, which means they have time, lots of time. They have paid, uh, they have sick leave, they have all those things. So uh, in the United States, women, mothers especially, but you know, people in general do not have any social security net. And then the more marginalized you are, the, the poorer you are, the less time and resources and energy you have to give to people and, and, and create community and help someone out when they're in trouble. And because mothers are not supported at all in the United States, when women get pregnant with children from these men who suck, who don't have any community, who just are parasites and extract this woman's uh, everything from her, right? And he doesn't help. If anything, these men, you know, at the bare minimum, they create more work. Um, but, you know, and the worse it is, the more dangerous it is for her, the children or child, and everyone who loves her. So this, what all the things I'm saying are even more important and more, um, like the stakes are way higher in the US because uh, workers don't have rights, really, you know, unless you're rich, you do not have the luxury of time and money and care. You don't have any extra of that stuff, especially now with housing crisis and, and the cost of living and all that stuff. So when you have someone in your, in your friend group who is dating a dude that none of you like, that all of you are warning her about, and she just keeps dating him, now uh, the conversations are going to be about him. Like, uh, you know, it's it, that there's going to be drama. There's going to be drama. And then the drama between that couple is now going to, you know, spill out into all the women who love her life. They're going to sit on the phone and listen and listen and listen unless they have good boundaries and are like, okay, I can't talk about this man anymore. You know, they're going to they're gonna tolerate her for a bit. But if those women are all decentering men and they, and they know that she deserves better, and that uh and, and and they've offered good sound advice and then she refused to listen to it well what happens is that a toxic man a narcissist an abuser like anywhere on that spectrum of selfish king baby is going to make her center him even if she's not someone who naturally would by being with him he's going to force her to center him he's going to create more work He's going to refuse to do things. And so she is going, if she wants to be with him, have to do more and more and more. And it's going to get worse over time. So that means she's going to be less available for all those friends. And on the rare occasion they see her, she's going to complain about him. 
And, you know, we saw it in, like, Schmegs in the City. You know, like, all of Carrie's friends were like, Go to therapy! We are so tired of hearing about big! You know, because it was just exhausting. So, this drama hijacks conversations. It now all of a sudden, uh, they are like, know way more about this man. They know all about like, they're going to hear about his job. They're get, like every, her world will be about him. He's the sun. She is a planet, but with her is a whole solar system or whatever you want to call it. A bunch of planets centering around him. They did not choose to date this man, but they are going to be orbiting around him on some level. Maybe they're all way out with Pluto or whatever. I don't know, is that even a planet anymore? I forget. Um, you know, they're not going to be close, but they're still going to be centering because she's centering him. You know? And the other thing, before I get into my own story, is that a lot of these men will actually are, are using women to get to those friends. They'll, a lot of times they'll dump you and go date those friends, right? Like, they, they, are, they are literally, like, calling in favors from all your friends, right? I had a friend give my ex a car. Now, this is New Mexico where everyone has, like, four cars that don't work. <laughs> At least in, the, in Taos. You know, multiple cars, most of them don't work or they barely work. They definitely would not pass any kind of air test. Um, and, yeah, one of my good friends gave my ex a car. And honestly, that stressed me out because I knew my ex was going to, I just, I, I sensed, I mean, I was really happy that he had his independence so I didn't have to be a soccer mom anymore. But by him having a car, I knew he would treat it bad and he did. And at a certain point, like he was so reckless with this car, I, I contacted my friend. I'm like, please take it back. I can't live with what, whatever might happen to your car. I can't live with that guilt. I don't, I, please take it back. And so he did. I'm so glad he did. So that's just one example. But, you know, if you have a child with this man, a child is a lot of work, right? We know that. A child, it, it, it one, it, one person can't do it all. And if he's not, if he leaves her, which he might, uh, or he stays with her and literally creates more work for her than if he was just gone, who's going to fill in? It's not his friends, like the she was saying in the last video. It is, those resources are going to be pulled from that whole friend group that whole community, the her family, right? And now this one dude has created a problem for everybody. Now, I'm not saying the child is a problem. I'm saying a, oh my God, we don't have enough resources. And now we have something that requires a lot of resources. Uh, and none of, none of the friends chose for her to become a mom, but she's going to turn to them for help because this man is going to be making her life so, 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 so hard on purpose that she will have no choice. And Cecilia, Regina talks about this all the time, about how much, you know, like uh, how the, even in families, if one of your family members makes a decision, you know, or dates someone terrible and has kids with someone terrible, like now the whole family does that, right? And so like all of our decisions impact other people. And what what was so good for me is that I didn't think I could ever be in that situation. I was like leading this decenter men life long before I knew what it was. I just literally was like, I don't want a man to hijack my life. I'm not, I didn't date. I literally, you know, with an exception of like a couple like little flings and a one night stands and hate forks, I did not date until I was 36. And so I was like, that's one reason why I have had I have so many crazy stories and had so many adventures and had such a great life is because a man did not derail my life. I didn't have kids. So I had nobody but myself to worry about so I could do everything I wanted to uh, so long as I found a way to do it. And so I was shocked that my first relationship ended up being totally consuming, abusive, like straight up terrifying and I almost died. But what was so, so good is that my friends, all my female friends especially, didn't center men. And so they started pulling away. Like, I can't listen to this anymore. They may not have said that. I could just tell, like, if I started being like, oh my God, blah, 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 and telling a crazy story about what this crazy man did yesterday. They're like, I could just see them being like, and I was like, oh, they're getting tired of this. So they started cutting me off in a very loving, healthy way because they were centering their own mental health. Did They did not choose to go on this roller coaster with me. So as long as we're not talking about him and whatever, then what? you know what I mean? But I lost friends. I lost a couple friends from that whole thing because I, I put them in danger. I put my whole community in danger. And that was a very hard lesson. 
but I learned the lesson and I never did it again. Comment for part two. Now, this was a very hard thing for me to experience, you know, and especially in this very nuanced conversation, because the last thing we want to do is leave women alone in relationships with abusers, right? Like this is not saying cut him off, never talk to him again. It is about figuring out a way to set a boundary with yourself as a friend of someone dating, uh, the friend of someone who is dating someone you hate and you know is dangerous. It is being like, I'm not willing to listen to her talk about him. I'm not gonna go anywhere where he is. Like you create your own boundaries, right? But um, just knowing what you are willing to do and what you're not willing to do. And what my friends really handled this so well. Like I don't think they've ever really had experience with this and they just, because they were very centered on themselves instead of men, they just kind of naturally did it well. But you know, they're there for me. They never made me feel shame. They never made me feel alone but they let me experience those consequences alone, but with an, a way out when I was ready. They never like said it, like I'm not gonna help you till you're ready to be done. But because they slow, slowly were just pulling away, like, yeah, we were happy for you at first, but you know this is bad and you're choosing to stay. Like they just became less and less available, especially if, they, if I was gonna bring him. They don't wanna hang out with him, they hate him. Why would they hang out with him? And so I was put in a position more and more every day. It's either my entire community that I have spent so long creating or him. And being put in that position made me have to decide. Yeah, and at the same time, at no point were they ever like, you're like, fork you, you're, you're alone. Because again, these men will isolate you on purpose. They wear you down on purpose. They, you know, like I've said before, he, I was like smoking, you know? I went to kid, like, juvie, like wearing the jumpsuit and stuff for this. I was not someone who did that anymore. Lesson learned. I usually learn my lessons. It usually takes one. One really painful lesson, and then I'm like, okay, life, I get it. This is probably not the best for me, or at least not this way. And so I wasn't a smoker anymore. And with him, I started smoking every day. So my, I was, my, my thinking was clouded. My judgment was clouded. Uh, I just became less and less, I get, became untethered from myself, right? Sleep deprivation, that's another thing. They wear you down through sleep deprivation. They wear you down from you walking on edge, your cortisol levels, you can't think straight. You hate yourself because they nag at you all the time. You're afraid, right? So they, they do this and they make you feel alone. Knowing that my community loved me was really important, but knowing they would not co-sign this relationship anymore put me in a position to experience A, the natural consequences of making this choice that I was making, and B, making that choice very clear. If I want a life with this dude, I'm gonna be sacrificing more and more and more and more and losing more and more things that are very valuable to me. If I'm willing to let him go, I can go back to my community. And I wanted to be with them so bad. I didn't even wanna be with this dude anymore. And I do also, in this conversation, want women to understand that uh, I, we all are on this pick-me spectrum, right? And that some women, like myself, who come from a, a like, literally, you know, narcissist parent, like diagnosed long before it was like a thing by doctor, also come from, you know, childhood essay, all this stuff where I, Really, uh, like I was just almost like set up to date a terrible dude, right? <laughs> uh, so, et voila, even though I was a late bloomer and I decentered men for all my life, how I, of all people, could then all of a sudden be a pick me? What? Right, it was so disturbing to realize that I am no better than any of the women I've ever judged. Here I am, centering this crazy person, and there was a lot going on, right? There is like all kinds of uh, like, stuff in my body, there's cortisol levels. Like I said, there was so much, dis like I was so gaslit and so brainwashed by this man that I was like, oh my God, well, how did I end up here? I don't even like who I am anymore. So there's a lot at play. It's not like every day I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make a choice. Be with him or screw over my community. I'm gonna be with him. It wasn't like that, obviously. But the more my community started to pull away endless resources of time, listening to me complain about this dude. You know, all the, they didn't want to be in this drama. You know, they had children, they had small children. Some of them were in the thick of babies and like two year olds. You think they have time for this giant, scary two year old that I'm with? No. And I think that's also was an advantage is because a lot of them were mothers. They had to 
be very conservative or make very intentional with their time and they're like, mm, no, 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 no. Don't have time for this. God bless those women! Because I started to feel more and more alone and isolated, not from my community because I was in an abusive relationship, but because of my loyalty to this person that I knew I shouldn't be with, that none of them liked, and that if I, I can't have my cake and eat it too. That's what it came down to. And so when I was ready to get out, and I was serious, and I meant business, they showed up, and boy did they show up. And they got me out, it was like this group effort. I'm so lucky, all of them could have been hurt, could have died. So we are all very lucky. But the guilt that I still live with um, today, I mean, I try not to beat myself up about it and, 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 and all that, but really having to, to, to sit with, I endangered everyone I love by staying with that man. Once I decided to leave, and that I was done with him, then it took a while to get out, right? And then of course, once I literally left the state to get away from him, I'm still sending him texts. So I was still not, um, I was still mind forked for a while, but at least I knew I knew I needed to separate. I knew I knew, couldn't be anywhere near him because I knew I just didn't trust myself, right? But when I was done, I was done. I wasn't necessarily done up here or in here, but done. And thank God I learned that lesson. Like again, I usually only learn lessons through like a lot of pain or, or near death situations and this was no different. <laughs> it drives my parents crazy. They're like, can you just learn anything easy? No. So this is what it comes down to this, uh, what I was trying to say earlier. We need to start viewing women who are in, who keep doing this. It's like an addiction. It's like an addiction and we need to treat it as such. I mean, people like literally, I mean, I have, I have had another addiction and this codependency stuff was way harder way and it almost and it was way more lethal in the end too just like with any addict you can't make them stop something they're not ready to stop you can't make them quit something that's not coming from in here you can let them suffer consequences you can have interventions you know you can stop bailing them out you can even pull away or even completely cut them off but nothing is going to make them quit unless that desire comes from within and the desire came from within from me because I saw very clear what my options were him or all of them so I say all this because a so many women don't even realize they're really uh codependent until they end up in a relationship so many women don't realize how dangerous these relationships are until they are it to a point where they, they don't know how to get out. And I always want women in these relationships to never feel like there's no way out. There is a way out. And also, if you've done this more than once, you're wearing down your community. And at a certain point, they may cut you off entirely the same way people do with addicts. People will give addicts a lot of grace, but sometimes we know this with any addiction, you can love them to death. If you keep letting them do what they do and pretending like it's all good afterwards, like, oh, you got out of another terrifying relationship that I risked my life getting you out of. Cool. Decenter men. Yay. And then you go right back into another relationship with another terrible dude. Now, you know, uh, now we're done. If you keep doing it and putting your friends through that because you are not done and you will not change and you will not do the work. And, and you, whatever is causing that, maybe it's not just patriarchal conditioning. A lot of times it's literally childhood trauma that you are reenacting again and again. But the more you reenact it, the more you reinforce it. You're not just going to magically unlearn it by dating another toxic dude. And so why I say a really important part for a lot of women who keep finding themselves in these uh, terrible relationships, just tap out. Tap out. Not forever, but tap out. Tap out for a while so you don't put yourself through that and die, but so you don't lose your entire community you spent your maybe years or decades building because there is a point where people are like, no more. And they will cut you off for good and they have every right to do so because that, if you are centering a very, a, a man, he will not only make you center him, especially the more toxic and dangerous he is, he will make everyone in your life center him too. And women who are trying to decenter men, you are literally putting them in danger. You are putting them in a position where they have to choose. Do I keep decentering men or do I, do I enable a woman centering men? Therefore, I'm, I'm centering men by proxy. Dating is a community sport and tough love will save your life.